Yo, I'm Bosk, you're on the Bosco YouTube channel. This is the one year review of my DCX immersion mining solution. Last year's been crazy. The eight miner DCX unit was the first immersion unit we deployed out here. Uh, so you can see that one over there in the corner behind the blue barrel. Since then we've deployed so many systems and it's really helped me to appreciate a few key things with the DCX unit in particular. So let's run from the top and let me step outside where it's a little cooler and it's a little quieter. The DCX system, they offer a plug and play, for the most part, immersion mining solution. They have two minor units, right? They're bit pod. They have their eight minor unit, the DCX enclosure that we have. It's been revised a few times over the years. They have a basically three pack version of the eight minor unit that comes with a flat top dry cooler. Uh, which is very pretty cool and that is like their first step into like okay so you want to be a big boy miner huh and then they offer complete full industrial grade solutions like we toured at akil's mining farm if you remember that mining farm tour and uh, that has since been taken over by the actual operator dennis at bma uh, if you remember that their dry coolers they look good the fit and finish is sweet these are basically radiators, right, that cool the miners. You run the fluid through these, you run the air over them, and it's cooler. And that's how it's cooled. One thing I really appreciate, especially after working through other systems, are these little asphalt feet that the dry coolers come with. It makes them an easier, more plug and play solution. One of the pros and cons of these DCX units is that it runs actually coolant through here and not immersion fluid. That makes it a lot easier to repurpose the heat, say like if you wanted to heat your mining pool, if you wanted to heat your actual swimming pool, not a mining pool, as opposed to like say some of their competitors that run the immersion fluid through the dry coolers. I haven't cleaned the back at all over the last year and that's all the stuff that's built up on it. And please understand ladies and gentlemen, this is a farmed field. I am in the woods. Look around, okay? There's all kinds of, you know, gunk and debris and you know, there's a whole lot of weeds lately too. I'm sorry about that. You want to earn passive income mining cryptocurrencies? Roger, roger. <laughs> I thought so. Me too. But really the first step is actually getting one of those mining rigs. That's where Coin Mining Central comes into play. They've been helping us source miners for years now and you can save money on your order by punching in the code BOSSCOIN. Use our link down in the video description below. But why would you be immersion mining anyway? Listen to how quiet this stuff is. I can have a conversation with you right here next to these things. These are systems that you could deploy in your neighborhood with an HOA and they would never be the wiser. One thing I also really do appreciate with the DCX dry coolers is they're the most unassuming of the dry coolers, especially their dry cooler for their eight minor unit, which is what we're gonna be focused on here today in this video review. You know, that's, that's small, that's, that's manageable, it doesn't look too industrial. Seriously, if I was in a neighborhood with an HOA, I would peel the DCX sticker off and just put like Mitsubishi or Daikin, and it doesn't look all that different than a, a mini split, which I have right here. Granted, I've got a cover on that one, so that one looks a little bit uh, different than normal. Let me show you the, the one without a cover. Mini split, dry cooler. Not very different. That can also even has like a similar logo and like gradient style going on. Uh, so this thing's been great. I've had eight Bitcoin miners in there. Regardless of Bitcoin mining profitability, whatever, the miners have been running great. Uh, none of them have broken. None of them have overheated. None of, none of them have had any sort of failure. They have been hashing away the entire time. Incredible, exactly what you want. I will say uh, that one thing I've done that makes life easier for this system is gonna be the fact that I run them all at about like 2,200 watts. So I'm essentially running six miners of full power in an eight miner unit. That was based on a personal decision to get better efficiency out of these rigs because they're kind of like end of Bitcoin mining life cycle. So that's one thing to kind of understand and think about. But I know people that have these systems and they're running eight miners in their full bore and they're working well. 
Uh, so with the temperature, I'm very happy with it. With the performance, I'm very happy with it. I switched it off of the uh, inverter. If you watch the uh, original video, it was recommended to use a transformer uh, to basically soften the electricity. That doesn't seem to be needed. It's an extra precaution that led to efficiency loss. Uh, so I don't recommend that. I don't like that. Speaking of the mining enclosure infrastructure, right? Like the pump, the dry cooler and so forth. I think one of my only gripes is that this thing pretty much runs full bore all the time. Uh, so it's a bit power hungry. It's kind of like my ninth miner in the array. And that's the only downside. But understand that depending on your you know setup and solution, like you're only gonna run a dry cooler for so low of electricity, right? To cool eight mining rigs. And if you switch to something like air cooling, like we have over in the digital shovel mini pod, then I mean, you're gonna be paying the juice to run big fans. And two of these digital shovel mini pod fans equate to about running a miner. So no matter what way you slice it, you're gonna be spending some juice uh, to keep these uh, systems, this equipment cool. If you don't know these DCX systems, basically, you know, roughly, you need to contact them. Say you saw it on Bosscoin, you know, hopefully they give you a better deal because of that. Uh, Cause you know, we did work with them uh, for review and feedback on their units and systems. You're gonna get into these for about $1,000 a miner. When you consider their unique benefits, I don't think it's unreasonable. It's also the industry standard. They're not the most expensive unit on the market. They themselves actually established like kind of like the first baseline for immersion mining pricing. They're continuing to build and innovate and change their systems uh, because for one example, they are revising their BitPod uh, to make it fit all new generation miners that are basically becoming bigger uh, among some other tweaks and, and cool, uh, very cool design changes. I think there's a lot of branding that could still be done and built upon with many immersion mining system manufacturers and it's nice to see them uh, trending that way. I I've been really happy with it. Uh, it. It's been a good system. When I think back, I didn't like the fact that um, it was a dual loop system because I wasn't really utilizing any of the benefits of a dual loop system. I'm fine with it now, you know, after the install. It leads to a couple extra steps when you're doing the installation. Uh, but again, if you're gonna use, uh, you know, heat reuse, right, you're gonna recycle that heat into your house in the winter, free heat, you're gonna heat, heat your swimming pool for free. Those are incredible solutions. Like, I want a pool and I want it heated and I want to do it with mining. So that is something I'm seriously starting to look more into, think about and consider. And, and I'd really love to uh, focus on using uh, some heat reuse in the winter uh, because it's like I'm, I'm literally spitting out all this heat and then I'm wasting money, electricity. I'm wasting what could be generating me more Bitcoin or whatever else running a system to generate heat in my house, right? It's like I, I, I literally make an excess of heat. So it's something I should think, how can I reuse this for free? Why, why not? Every dollar I save is money made, right? More or less, something like that. Am I happy with the DCX unit? Yes. Would I buy another one? Yes. Is it my favorite unit? It depends. And that's largely suited by your installation capabilities as well as your heat reuse uh, goals and potentials there. Furthermore, I received their PDU, but I did not use their PDU because I had existing circuitry in my shed. Uh, their PDU seems sweet, and I wish I could have used it, but I already had money sunk into the electrical infrastructure in here where I didn't need to, right? So I could just slap those Altair PDUs that you saw installed in there, uh, and those provide the circuitry for my miners to run off of, and I even already had the existing circuitry sitting there idle in the shed to power the dry coolers. I had originally designed this gray shed uh, to kind of mimic a shipping container, and I was gonna make like an air-cooled shipping container or mining shed uh, design. Uh, but I ended up getting the mini pod in over there. So that served as my air-cooled mining solution. Uh, eventually, I turned the gray shed into the immersion mining shed. Uh, so I was like halfway into making it an air-cooled shed during the switch, so. There are some things that were weird and I wouldn't do designing it from the ground up, especially with what I know now. Uh, but you'll find in many mining farms, a lot of it is building on what's already there and then designing it better from that point forward because I can make this perfect or I can make it a better investment. And then that's gonna be my goal and to try to recoup as much of my uh, equipment I have like in sunk cost and infrastructure that I already have in sunk cost. What's the reliability of the DCX unit? 
uh, bulletproof so far. It does have some wicking, right? Some of the immersion fluid travels up uh, the cables. Uh, so at first that was alarming. Uh, the fluid level has never really dropped a noticeable amount. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, right, it's, it's good to go. It's fine. Uh, send it and uh, power goes out. Power comes back on, everything kicks back on. All the circuits that these are on are always hot. So power kicks off, everything shuts down, power kicks on, everything kicks on. That's important because if they're mixed, matched in a weird way, or some things have a switch and some don't, right? Worst case scenario, I have miners turning on, heating, and then the cooling system's not running and the miners basically bake themselves. They have fail safes built in that should hopefully protect them, right but it's not something you want to keep testing over and over and over and even when fail safes protect them they still can kind of accrue uh, minimal 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 uh, eventually moderate and serious damage and you know you start frying power supplies uh, you know chips go bad on your ASIC mining hash board right and those those little purpose-built mining chips uh, yeah it, it's good it's fine it runs it's effective it's simple power off it's off power on it's on uh, if I want to turn the system off, the easiest thing for me to do because there's no real easy switches or buttons or anything, I go to the breaker and turn it off at the breaker. I can also easily turn off miners two by two with the PDUs I have. I have two miners on each PDU there. Those are each 30 amp circuits. Uh, so I can flip a PDU off and deal with those miners if I should need to do so for whatever reason. Um, what I would like to see improve with the DCX unit, uh, some of their competitors are creating lids with handles on them, lids that are clear. That's incredible. I'd love to see that in a DCX unit. I also would love to see handles supplied with the miners that you can put in um, on the face of them like we've seen some competitors do. That would make it easier to take these in and out. Uh, DCX also has a flow plate you need to put on the bottom. That wasn't really fun to do. I would love to see those flow plates built in uh, to the system uh, and that, that would ideally be something you specify when you order like hey I'm gonna run amp miners okay here's the amp miner flow plate done those are things I'd like to see the biggest addition I want to see with this is going to be a more efficient dry cooler uh, that ramps up and down with the temperature needs to save me electricity right uh, when possible and then I really want a built-in temp meter, just a little LCD on the front of it that tells me the temperature inside of it. One, it looks cool. Two, I want to know. Three, I'm a nerd. And four, most importantly, it lets me know at a glance, is everything good to go, right? Like, why is that so hot? Maybe if it's getting too hot, I'm just pulling too much juice in there, right? Because with immersion, you can, you have enhanced cooling capabilities. You can start overclocking, you can do a lot of things. So, so if you're gonna have those enhanced capabilities, uh, I want at a glance to be able to see what the temp's doing. So if I can crank these up even more, if that's what I wanna do, potentially great. If I need to pull things back, right? Underclock them a little bit to get them to a better scenario. Something I wanna know there as well. Because keep in mind, it's not just about the efficiency of these dry coolers. The hotter your mining rigs are, they themselves will pull more electricity they become less efficient. And I don't even mean everything associated with the cooling. The hardware becomes less efficient. It becomes more of a gas guzzler, an electricity executor. That sounds good. Maybe this is a tall order, uh, but something I would personally kind of like to see uh, would be like a little control system, right? You get this control system. It's got your PDU. It has a switch. Uh, and then it has a temp meter, right? And I have this basically box or pillar I can mount on the wall that I plug my gear into uh, and it gives me you know real-time data of what is it doing how much power is it pulling what's the temp of the fluid in the container there and really give me an all-inclusive package right for a you know one-click immersion mining solution I don't have to add anything and for some people they may end up with extra pieces but for a lot of people, especially first time and smaller time immersion miners, they will have a one click plug and play option of everything they possibly need. Some weird equipment that is actually critical to come with this and they need to keep shipping it uh, would be, for example, like their pump. Their fluid pump to pressurize the system is absolutely critical, not common uh, equipment or tools. Another thing that they should include that would be very cheap, especially when purchased at bulk, would be hose cutters. A hose cutter to cut the flexible 
hose and cables that these come with. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's something you can get on Amazon, you know, tomorrow for 10 bucks, whatever. But those are not common pieces of equipment that most people will have and be sitting on. If they really wanted to take it a step further, they can include a hole saw kit, right? You, you literally just need the right hole saw to get the pipe through a wall. And then I can't think of anything else that you wouldn't have or need that you know, wouldn't be common. Like you should have your own socket set. And that, I mean, that's more or less it. Personally, I think the companies need to think a little bit more about the end user experience and how can I give them like an all-inclusive, one and done, uh, buy this and you're good uh just product a, 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 a true solution right don't just sell me a product sell me a solution uh, because i'm not just buying infrastructure i'm buying your research and development and the better experience i can have up front well uh, it makes for an overall more pleasurable experience and yeah i mean just looking back over last year this has been a great addition to the voscorn mining farm it runs it's got best in class density there are no competitor systems that run eight units the competitor systems run six units so getting plus two miners of density is a big boon if that's what you want or need right being able to throw two more in there could be incredible or leaves you space for future expansion and depending where the numbers fall it may be a better bang for buck so moving forward i'd love to add their three-tier unit to the farm uh, that would be a fun addition a fun project uh, it gets bigger, it gets beefier, the install is more involved, uh, but you get three times as many miners to put, 24 miners. It's ideally suited for a three phase, but it can be configured for single phase, or you could buy just simply three of their eight miner units, uh, which is actually what Akil did, if you remember that video. He did that before he built out the major mining farm, it was basically like his pilot experiment. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a good time, good experience if you're thinking about it. If you've used DCX, I'd love to hear your thoughts on their products down in the comments below. Uh, what do you like, what do you dislike, and why would you go with their system or someone else's system? I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback, uh, and stay tuned, I'm going to do a long-term review on their BitPod, as well as competitor immersion mining systems soon and I'm gonna start working on some comparison content, breaking down these products that are in the same categories, right? The six and eight minor units, the two minor units. And the system overheated, subscribe or something like that. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.